So he plays this trap move. If rook d5, then bishop c4. Black ignores that, of course. c6. And now c5 is weak, so the knight's tied down to the protection of the c5 pawn. So Kotov throws in a check and plays king f2. Now black increases the pressure. Bishop g4. Brings, black brings the king and, and the rook comes down more aggressively. And after this rook d5, so the rook can now come to d3 to attack that knight, potentially. So rook d3, and now king d7, protecting c6. And now the bishop can also come back to attack c5 without the knight protecting it on b3. So white is falling to bits now. Gradually, but surely. And in this position, Kotov had enough after bishop g7. So he puts that down to... Um, to what a laughable extent, my thinking is based on general principles and plans. Okay, he overestimated a position which looked as though Black wasn't doing much. Black's position seemed to be, you know, most of his pieces at one point in this game were all on the back row. And in general, in theory, you play the Fianchetto variation and you don't expect to be hacked on the king side. But, you know, when Black gets in f5 and f4, you know, the alarm bell should start ringing that this kind of position is dangerous. Especially Black's, you know, still got that Queen's Bishop. So, you know, Black was already doing really quite well here. So I'm not really convinced by this example, but this is the prelude to Kotov's training. So what he did as a result of this and other losses... And he also considered all the time trouble he was getting into. into. What he did was getting um, a selection of all these really complicated positions of annotated games and looking at the annotator's analysis and then doing his own analysis and seeing how they were different. And apparently, you know, this training method of comparing, um, you know, his, his moves to the annotators, you know, he, he gradually got more and more... Um, you know, better at that, at matching um, the person who had annotated the game. Um, let's let's see. Let's let's quote here. So he would sometimes spend half an hour on this task. You know, very complicated positions. And at first, there was a big discrepancy in favour of the annotators. And then he learned apparently to widen his scope and delineate each variation with considerable exactitude. So Kotov is quite boastful here. And naturally, he analysed without moving the pieces, just to make it like a tournament game. So in this way, Kotov examines lots of tricky and complicated positions. OK, and we, we have now, in this third example, which what I'll, I'll, I'll leave for another series if you're interested. But basically, he takes a very well annotated position. And, you know, he finds an, an initial brilliant move, a really subtle move. But the reason I'm not convinced by any of this, um, or rather I'm only convinced as the candidate move system, as a training system of comparing to annotators, that's what I'm convinced about at the moment. I'm not convinced about his system during a real-time game to be able to create this labyrinth of variations. I just don't think that's possible. Only in very forcing positions do you get this like if then, if then, if then. Because only then you can guarantee that you're going to end up this in this position five moves deep or, t or ten moves deep. Because most of it was forcing. Of course then you can guarantee that, you're, that it's likely to be relevant analysis. But in quiet positions... I, you know, there's strategic trump cards to consider here. You know, black in this game had clear strategic trump cards. This dark squared bishop, this active rook later, and, you know, this advancing space with f5 and f4, leaving h3 as a target. There were lots of strategic cards, which all black had to do, from black's point of view, was find relevant resources for exploiting those strategic trump cards. That's a shortcut to this whole labyrinth of variations business, which Kotov seems to be emphasising as though this is something you would do in real time, create this big labyrinth, when the only evidence he's provided so far is that he took these examples, in, in our first example series, that the master was stumbling from variation to variation, played a safe move, got blown away because of knight f4 in, in, in that other series, but here, it's, it's, it's as though, you know, basically... Kotov is advocating a training system based on the use of annotated games. 
of other people's games. And I know from doing chess videos, by the way, on YouTube, it's always much easier to annotate your own games because you're aware of the thought processes. You're aware of the critical variations. You spent that hour or two in, in your club playing a game or in a tournament playing that game. Of course you're aware of the variations. And that's what I find interesting now of what Kotov writes because by saying that he's looking at all the well-annotated games, he's basically trying um, to test his ability to analyse with someone that was intimate to that game. And that is very clever, that kind of um, you know, test he was putting himself under. And if he was getting more accurate at doing that, uh, that's good. It was training his intuition. But, you know, in, in modern times, you can train your intuition by solving lots of puzzles. There are online sites for solving puzzles. That's similar because then you're looking at a position which you're thrown into detached from as an observer and trying to find the winning combination. So, you know, why isn't solving puzzles just as good as this rigorous training exercise, you know, for improving your tactics, for improving your analysis of variations? You know, or, or reading books um, uh, without moving the pieces, just, just reading them. Apparently, you know, Tony Miles did that. He just read chess books and that improved his ability to calculate variations. So there are various ways of improving um, the analytical side, but um, it's this advocation as a real-time thinking process during games, especially when there's not much going on. I just don't buy into it at the moment from this second example game and this, this fragment which Kotov um, shows here. I just think he was positionally outplayed in this opening and he suffered the consequences. You know, his Fianchetto uh, variation of the King's Engine wasn't as safe and solid as he'd originally thought. I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.